This episode is brought to you by Jay, Jesse, Miguel, John G, and Brett, this week's newest patrons. How do you spend 110,000 US dollars on a sailboat? What do you actually need? Where are you actually gonna be sailing? How do you not waste your hard earned dollars on cheap tricks or unnecessary gadgets? What even is this thing? A stack pack? Adjustable backstay? Do I need this anchor? This week on Everything You Need to Know, the $110,000 sailboat. If you're shopping at $110,000, then you're basically going to find three groups of boats that are sort of worth looking at, and you'll have your pick based on your needs. First, there's a ton of these older model, heavy, long passage sort of cruisers. Many of them are catches with center cockpits. We'll talk about those in a minute. The second group you'll find are these floating condo sort of production boats that maximize comfort and livability, but still hold their own when you take them coastal cruising, uh, though many people claim that they won't cross oceans on them. And the third group of boats you're gonna wanna look at at this price point, it's the Island Packets. And just in case you've been ignoring sailboats since 1979, Island Packet is a brand of boat known the world over for strength and comfort, but not really for speed. IP, as it's called, was founded in 1979 by a naval architect named Bob Johnson, and he set out to build the most solid, the thickest, heaviest, world cruising sort of a boat, something that you could live on and sail around the world if that's what you want to do. They're known for being much bigger inside than anything else of the same length and extremely well built and they basically last forever and this is reflected in the price tag. The only thing they're not known for however is racing and being a full keel battleship kind of cruiser they just weren't designed to be rail down and pointed 30 degrees to weather racing around the marker it's just not their vibe so for 110 grand there are two island packets for sale right now in virginia and they both deserve a look now don't be fooled by the loa of 38 feet this is going to feel like a 45 footer inside and it's going to be better built and more reliable than a wood burning stove these are both everything you'd expect in a boat designed to go cruising they're made to do that. You get a fairly traditional layout inside with two private staterooms. None of that splitting up the staterooms and halves to make a charter boat. You also get a very usable galley that you can actually cook at while you're underway, even if the sea state is really, really bad. And you get a huge head to make the boat that much easier to live with. Also, of course, you get the traditional island packet, large and very well-protected cockpit. Nobody's gonna fall out of this thing. With the massive weight of these full keel boats, it's also no problem to have dinghy davits on the back and a 10 foot rib hanging off of them. With the outboard still on it, this boat won't even be bothered by that kind of weight on the transom. And speaking of weight, you'll be carrying lots with you with 50 gallons of diesel and 90 gallons of fresh water. Now you might be thinking, yes, yes, Tim, all that sounds wonderful, but I can get at least five more feet of boat for my $110,000 and yeah, you'd be right but you can't get more Island Packet. This is as cheap as you're ever gonna see one of these, and for good reason. Island Packet isn't just some sailboat. This isn't cheap as chips, fun in the sun. It's top quality. It's you get what you pay for sort of territory. It's a unique club that you can only be a part of if quality is your first priority. No expense is spared here, and it shows. Island Packet won 2019 Domestic Boat of the Year and 2021's Best Full-Size Cruiser Award, and they're rated the highest level of rating, the Class A, which is Ocean Going. They've won Excellence in Customer Satisfaction Awards five times over, Best Mid-Size Cruiser, Best Long Distance Cruiser, and on and on and on. Honestly, the only reason not to buy an island packet is if you want to race, which they don't do, or if you simply can't afford one, it's out of your budget, or if you don't particularly like the color yellow which they all are, for whatever reason. So what if you don't like the color yellow, or those 37s just aren't enough space for you, the spouse, and the two doggos that you want to take cruising with you? What if you want something bigger that can also cross oceans? 
the $110,000 price point is chock full of these older, long passage sort of cruisers for you to look at. Things like these two CSY cutters sitting in Florida right now. And CSY stands for Caribbean Sailing Yachts, and it was building boats out of Tampa in the 1970s and 80s, specifically aimed at, you guessed it, Caribbean sailing. Now, CSY couldn't be bothered with selling their boats through dealers and instead opted to sell them directly to customers and promote the boats at boat shows, giving tours of the factory. They even published books called Guide to Buying a Cruising Yachts, where they featured their boats in the building process. They made it easy for you to get one. CSY also started something new, a charter to own sort of program. And hear me out, it's where you could buy a boat but you wouldn't immediately take possession of it. It would be rented out as a charter boat to cover the initial payments and get some of the cost out of the way until you actually took ownership, which greatly reduced the cost and opened up boat buying to a whole new market of people. These two CSY 44 footers have Caribbean written all over them. Outside, you're gonna find Caribbean cruising type things like hard dodgers, big anchors with even bigger chains, the protected center cockpits that lend themselves really well to full enclosures. And you can expect extremely beefy rigging, blocks and tackle, as well as solid construction and hatches everywhere to let the air down below. You also usually get big arches for your solar panels and wind generators, as well as davits to carry the rib. These are also full keel but shallow draft boats, aimed at comfort and reliability at sea but giving you the ability to get in and out of whatever anchorage you might want to on your travels. I've seen them way up river in Georgia and in the Carolinas to ride out storms, but they're also happy to weather those storms out on an ocean passage as well. Inside, they're set up specifically for cruising with dedicated private staterooms. You get large galleys, large heads, and plenty of room in the middle to entertain guests. And you can expect a big fridge and a freezer and a lot of wood to polish everywhere you look. The older center cockpit is everywhere you look, from $50,000 all the way on up. And I suspect these boats appeal to a lot of people. You get the space of a small apartment inside a hull that can really go anywhere your little heart desires in comfort and safety. You also get tons of room for power generation on the back. You get lots of deck space to store things like your folding bikes or your paddle boards on a boat that won't break the bank. I will say they aren't my cup of tea, however. I think they were everything in the cruising world in the 80s. But I also think we started to check all these same boxes on newer boats that were made in the 90s. And speaking of newer boats, if crossing oceans isn't your thing, and what you want to do is maximize the amount of comfortable space and modern luxury that you're going to get for your hard-earned dollars, we have to go to the third group of boats. These are the floating condo production style boats. And this is where the haters might want to click away from this video, but I urge you to stay tuned because the end might surprise you. Lady K Sailing is brought to you by patrons, people who give a couple of bucks an episode to really make this whole channel possible. I couldn't do it without you. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. This last group of boats is likely the one most of you are going to buy anyway. I know some people I've talked to like the old West Sails or CSY type cruisers, and some other people need sort of a lifetime warranty kind of boat like the Island Packet. But I think mostly, most people just want the luxury. So here we go. First up, and I love these, this is a Genoa Sun Odyssey. This is the 40DS. For $109,000 even, you're looking at the pinnacle of space and comfort in 40 feet of hull. Now, Genoa is, of course, owned by the Beneteau Group. So what you're getting here is sort of the Lexus to Beneteau's Toyota. Genoa's tend to be the fancier versions of the Beneteau's. And this one has the raised cabin top, so you get a deceivingly huge amount of space in here. And trust me, the pictures this broker took of this boat do not capture the sheer size of these things for a 40 footer. You also get big space in the cabins and the heads, which there are two of each. These boats also sail very well with a very high aspect fin keel, getting you upwind when you need to, but she's also very light for her length at just under 16,000 pounds. She'll, she'll, she'll be really, really quick and very maneuverable in just about any conditions. And everyone who's got one of these always raves about the panoramic view from inside the cabin and how big it feels. And that's a huge deal when you're going to be living on the boat full time. Although this was a boat set up for two couples to live on, hence the two cabin, two head layout. 
for a single couple, I might steer away from that and rather go towards something with one less head and maybe a smaller second cabin so that you get more space in sort of the living area. And I might move on to something geared toward a single couple living aboard with maybe a little bit of room for guests if sleepovers are going to happen. This is one of Beneteau's most popular models that they've ever made. And you'll see why in this extremely crisp and extremely clean looking 373. And wow, does it show well. This is the much more sensible layout. It's two cabins with one head. And that's what I'd be looking for. And it has a length of just 37 feet. So I could single hand it easily if I have to. If boats were cell phones, you'd have the old center cockpit boats as sort of blackberries. Been around forever, tough as nails, and the old school among us might prefer them. Then you'd have the ultra complicated boats. Those would be androids, chock full of features that you might never use, and endlessly customizable. This boat is then an iPhone. You get it home, you take it out of the box, you tell it your Wi-Fi password, and it just works. It's just a phone. And this is just a Caribbean cruising boat. But that's all it's trying to be. It's simple. It does the job extremely well. And all you have to do is switch it on. Now, will you love this boat? Not much more than you love your phone, I imagine. But will you cherish it for doing exactly what you need it to do without overcomplicating your life? I think yes. For the price tag of $110,000 even, I suspect this will even fly through a survey. I mean, look at it. I think you buy it, you enjoy it, and you call it good. Honestly, what more could you ask for here? What more do you need? It's got a furling mane, it's got a perfect interior, maybe add some davits to haul the dinghy around, and a couple of solar panels, and just head south, my friends. This boat makes it all very, very easy. Now, I said there was sort of a shocker at the end, and which one would I buy? Um, I think for the $110,000, I really like that last Beneteau, but I want something that is a little bit more rugged. So to be honest with you, I'm kind of going island packet in this particular list. There's a whole bunch of other boats that we can look at in the $110,000 price range, but these were the big ones that stood out. Now we can dive into these boats for hours and I'd really like to. The $110,000 price point is huge. But we're going to end it here because the video is getting kind of long. Um, we'll do it again next week. A little update before we go. I am headed to the Annapolis Sailboat Show in October. And I'm going to be bringing my son with me. Um, you may, may remember him from a previous video where we were in Cuba. And the boat broke down and he was driving. And just that's a cool video if you want to watch it. Um, I got a very generous offer to stay on a YouTube friend's absolutely stunning Hans Christian. This boat is gorgeous. Thank you so much, Todd. So we're going to save a buck on hotels. Uh, my schedule is too, super tight at home, however, so I'm going to drive down fast on the Friday, uh, spend Saturday at the boat show, and then make a leisurely drive home on the Sunday. And I know some of you had said that you'd like to link up or hang out while I'm down there, so I was thinking maybe we'll do dinner at Mike's Crab Shack Pasadena uh, on the Friday night. Uh, if you want to come or just link up in Annapolis, uh, you can contact me through the Lady K Instagram page, Lady K Facebook page, or we're on Discord now if you'd like to chat. Um, the Lady K Discord is pretty active most nights um, with people talking about boats and sailing and sharing old war stories and having drinks. Uh, and I get on there as much as I can. I'll leave a link in the description. Please feel free to come join us. All you need for Discord is a microphone or you can join from your phone or your tablet if you want to. Until next week, friends, keep the heavy side down, but not too far down. See you later. Mm -hmm.